Be Dr. Cox, we will call the meeting to order. And first item up is approval of the agenda. Does anything need to be changed? Or are we good? No, I think it's good. You, you don't really know, but you think so. Okay. We can pull it up here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got well, it. I'm having a problem. Okay. <coughs> so, what's the board's pleasure on the agenda? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Got an agenda. Okay. Uh, minutes. Yeah. Approval of the board minutes. And let me see. Uh, I think we got this looking at it. Oh, it's three sets and four sets. And once again, I'm sure everybody's looked over those. Move approval. Second. Okay, got a motion and a second on the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 I want to stay myself on November the second. November the second. Cindy, make a note of that. And that'll carry us into our no action, and we're gonna go straight over to Mr. Hudson for capital update. And I see several things attached. You'll just have to No action or action. No, yeah, it should no, be on our action. No action. No action. Let me look, make I, I haven't scrolled down to the action portion. If you have an action item, I can move it over there later, but it says no action right now. It's supposed to be under action three items. Okay. I see some things attached. Can we want to wait for action? Or? Go ahead and go over them. I can, I can hold okay. them over, I guess, can't we, Don? We can mm -hmm. add them to it. And, mm -hmm. yep. and you, that way you won't even, well, I well you won't have one to of, One of the attachments on our regular spreadsheet just shows where we're at right, on each project. Okay. And the information that is stated on there is what I'm getting ready to ask for approval on or what y'all would like to do. Well, when is that stand? Okay, hold on. It would be, um, it's titled uh, um, Update 2017 Capital Projects, dated 11 6 of 17. Okay. Yeah. It says action oh, yeah. requesting approval. Mm -hmm. There's three items that we um, received bids on. Um, the first one was the Southside High School um, Gym Hall replacement. Um, the project was budgeted $7,000, and when our bids were opened, the low bidder was Tyndall's Home Improvement in the amount of $7,500. Um, this project is $500 over our budget. Let me go and read the other ones, and then y'all make a decision. Yeah, Because sure. they're all three over. Sure. Um, the HVAC in Building 1, that's here, and that's one of our upgrades. Um, the project was budgeted $5,000, um, and the low bid was Advanced Air Solutions of Washington and the amount of $5,817.42. This project is $817.42 over budget. Okay. Uh, the third one is HVAC replacement and plant operations um, and IT. It feeds all the way across the building. The project was budgeted $5,000. Um, the bids were open. It was Advanced Air Solution of Washington um, in the amount of $6,539.68. Um, this is fifteen hundred thirty-nine dollars and sixty-eight cents over our budget. Why do you think that was? Was it just because at the time you put it in the budget, things have well, changed? Yes, ma'am. Because we we use our local people to get our bids, and we put the bids in. We ask them what a five-ton replacement on a split system would be. And the only thing that I can really say about that one, we found out after we did the budget, there was no return from the other side of the building. So we did add a return, eighty-five foot duck. Um, for the return because that building had been hodgepodge together and added and all the way over where the IT fellas are they didn't have a return they had a supply but didn't have any return so we always had a problem with them being super cold and us not being so they were getting all the cold air and no return from it so that would help balance the system so that was probably an additional add pretty close to that amount so we're looking at about twenty nine hundred dollars mm -hmm. extra for those three projects yes ma'am right? okay. um, do we need to open and if, any of those and if I, files? No, if I may note, we do have with 68,340 in our save from other projects. So depends on where y'all want to pull it from or what y'all decision Carry to do. Carried over from last year. Carried over from our previous project from last year. 68,000. $340. Okay. $340. Okay. So we're good to cover a few hundred bucks here or there. Okay. Um, how about if I just carry this over to 6.3 and I can just take a vote when I get down there. Mm -hmm. Somebody, will somebody give me a motion to amend it to six, to add Move it to 6.3? Second. Got a motion and a second. Add these three items at 6.3 under action. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. That way, whether we'll you're here or not, at that yes, point, I've, I've written down exactly what you got here and I'll we'll take care of it when we get it over there. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Uh, okay, now I've got to scroll back up though. Uh, Mr. Mark Dawn, I believe, wants to talk to us about a FEMA update. Yes, sir. Just want to happily report that a year and a month after Hurricane Matthew, 
that we have received two <laughs> checks from FEMA, uh, one check for $8,024.70. That would cover the cost of the extra pay for those folks that work shelters, fuel, and other missing items. Um, and then one a check for $5,000, which will cover the repairs at the classroom at Northside High School. And we're working on the bids to put that out as we speak. To uh, There was some tile damage, if you remember, some water damage. Yeah. So we're, we'll now be able to repair those. But we can finally put that matter to rest. So just want the board to be aware. Eventually it does happen. Yes, sir. Anybody have any questions for Mark? I don't have a question for Mark. Or but we, we did discuss maybe in the future, are we going to, uh, Dr. Phipps, say yes. something to... I'm going to add that in as a, as a standing line item on the budget. And if it's not used, we carry it over each year and we okay. have the money built in. Are we talking about the same thing? I think, I think we, so. Yeah. We're, we're absorbing the cost. And the, yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead. If, if you think it's different, yeah. say it. Yeah. No, no. I, I'm just glad that the congregation is agreeing with the. <laughs> we're thinking the same thing. Yeah. I'm glad we're all on the same hymn, singing the same song. Okay. okay. Anything else about that? Okay. If not. Policy revisions. Uh, Dr. These are for first reading, and, and there are two different uh, attachments that you'll have. One is the legislative policy update set one for the fall of 2017, and it, it's like the, the table that you normally see that has the policy number, the title, the description of the update, any legal authority, and the notes that are there. What I would highlight here is that there are a couple of these policies that we may pull before we actually request permission, one of those being the policy that deals with teacher contracts because we have some work that we're, we're dealing with there. Another one is a policy that uh, comes into play if you have a restart school and we don't have any restart schools, so I'm trying to determine if we want to keep this in place in case we were to have a restart school later or it will be policy 2400 that may not impact us. The other is policy 2670. It's a new state requirement that is mandating that we have what's called a business advisory council put together. We actually have to make initial appointments to this to members for this council beginning terms starting in January of 2018. And if you read the body of that policy, we already have a committee that meets once a month in our in our county. We call it the Business and Innovation Council or something like that. I'm working with the chairperson of that council to see if they would let this this committee operates so that we don't have to pull the same people for two sep completely separate committees. So I'll have that information back to you after we're ready to look at it for the second go round. And then the other uh, is just a list of legal references that you have. And all of the legal reference changes there are just changes because they reflect things that have happened legislatively or otherwise that are have legal references that are footnotes that connect the policies together. So we're not asking for any action tonight, but just wanted you to be aware of those. Okay. Any questions or comments? I do want to step back to the FEMA update, and it's okay. really not the FEMA update, but ask Stan and maybe Dr. Phipps both. Um, I noticed mm -hmm. one of the county commissioners' meetings the other night, they were talking about uh, fixing the generator at Northside. Is, is that in progress? I know they were looking at bringing in a mechanic to do the repairs. I think, I think the solution actually turned out to be a lot better in term of, than what they were afraid of, and I'm sure Stan can give you details. The piston ring of the machine here in yep. Washington did fix it. Um, it was a water pump. The back of the water pump rusted out and dumped all the water into the oil. But it has been put up. It's in service. It's in line, ready to go. It was okay. as of last Friday. Good. We put it back in service last Friday. Mm -hmm. Which means that Northside then will be able to be used as shelter mm -hmm. again. Okay. Yep. That sounds good. Now, is that being handled through the county? Yes as their maintenance and, and i don't know if, if they did that through emergency management or the county commissioners but we didn't they, they took care of that work we weren't involved in that they did set up through the county set up a po through them to fix it no matter what you know if it was cost feasible i think it was 29 29 30 thousand dollars they allotted to spend on it but it, i don't know what true bill was but it was water pump and labor and then they had to flush the system get all the old oil out the cankered oil and put new oil and cool it and they put an anti-corrosion additive into it so Maybe in the future we won't have any problems. So it has been down for a period of time. Yes, sir. It's been down for a right good while. Pretty close to a Two, year. Yeah. For some of you all that's been around a while too, if I'm not mistaken, that generator actually was a gift to the school system through Tidal and Electric. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was more or less for that purpose for a shelter down there. I, I'm glad to see that the county is putting some money into it. And, Get it up and run, but it was a nice gift at the time too, you know. And it was supposed to be so the school could use it in case something was to happen during a, a regular school day. They could have it. So, uh, 
That's been a while, hey? Yeah, been a while, but you're right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, give a little history lesson. Yeah, right? thank you. We need it every now and then. At least but we didn't have to pay for it. No, we didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> we well, probably couldn't afford it. <laughs> if you were a taxpayer, you had to pay for it. But that, exactly. But not through the school's budget. Right, right. Okay, anything else there, Butch? Do you have any other comments, Butch? No, oh, thank you, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, I think then I'm at enrollment update. I wanted to wait until we had official numbers from the state and the impact of us budget-wise we didn't know what the final dollar figure would be but kind of jumping out to the bottom of the little attachment that I've included there if you take a look at our day 10 enrollment and we're well past day 10 but we look at our funding is based on the best of uh, two when you look at day 20 figures for the first 20 days and the second 20 days but on day 10 uh, this year we were at 6,594 students Last year, at the same time, 6,780 students. That does not include pre-K, by the way. It's a reduction of 186 students, a significant reduction. Uh, I wanted to share a little bit of information. When you look at charter schools, private schools, and home schools, we have nine charter schools that are listed uh, on the state that impact Beaufort County, uh, that have served Beaufort County in the past. We have two this year that don't have any Beaufort County students. We have one that has three, one that has one, and one that has six. But there are a total of 433 students from our county that are in charter schools. Private schools, there are three that are listed in Beaufort County with, for the total of 380 students from Beaufort County. I don't have the numbers of students from Beaufort County that attend a private school in another county, but there certainly are more there, so that number would be higher. And then there are 350 registered home schools in Beaufort County. Now that may not mean that every one of those home schools currently has a student, but there are 350 registered, and it also doesn't mean that every one has one student. Some could have multiples there. If you do a conservative figure, you're looking somewhere around 1,100 students that are being served uh, in other in, in, in other uh, ways other than the Beaufort County Schools, and that's something that we want to keep an eye on in terms of is there something we're not doing that we need to do better? Is there an area of concern that we need to look at, uh, making sure that we address? Um, th there's also some enrollment projections that we get from the Department of Public Instruction I want to share with you in, in meetings to come that give us an idea of where we're at in a 10-year window looking ahead. I can tell you the numbers from the Partnership for Children that's dealing primarily with, with young children. The number of births to, to families in Beaufort County is gone down significantly. So there are fewer students in the pipeline to be students of ours. So I think you're going to see a decline. But then when you have other options for parents to have their children do things other than the regular public schools, it has a major impact on us. And, and while we don't look at each student with a dollar sign, we're losing funding when, when our students leave and we want to know what we can do to keep as many in as possible. So I just want to give you that as, as a update and then the next agenda item is in some ways related to that. I have, a, um, I have a question that you probably don't have the answer now, but as we're looking at these projections, I'd like to know, do we see a pattern of when we lose students? In other words, are we getting them enrolled but by third grade, we're losing them. In other words, when you go from Bath and eighth grade to Northside, that eighth grade class, is that who ends up being in the ninth grade at Northside? Likewise, it, are the eighth graders at P.S. Jones, uh, does that equal the size of the ninth grade class at Washington High School? Or does the first grade class at Eastern, you know, equal the second grade class the following year at John Cotton Taylor? Is there some bleeding happening somewhere in a gap that we need to address is there a way to find that out we can look at we, we have month by month and does, year does by it year make sense numbers. what i just it, it asked does, yeah. yes and that's what i want the, the next agenda item would look into some of those things throughout the school year but then from ones from a subsequent school year to the next as well just to be able to see where that pattern is if there is a pattern yeah and there might not be one right. it could simply be like you say there's not as many kids in the pipeline to get enrolled in kindergarten all across the county but if there is some bleeding going on in one area maybe we need to address that yeah. thing okay anything else if not class size uh, and when I asked Lisa to put this on the agenda, I guess it's really not a class size committee. What I want to ask the chairman to consider and ask for you, for you all to think about would be for us to put together a committee that would look at long-term planning for enrollment and facilities. And part of that would get into some of the conversations that have been had probably more outside of this body 
uh, with people in the community than, than certainly have happened here. But as we look at long-term enrollment management and the, the conversation about redistricting comes up and there have been conversations about buildings and construction, we've not had any of those conversations as a board. And I think we need to look at what DPI is, is projecting our enrollments are going to be 10 years out as we make some long-term plans. Uh, one of the pieces that's going to play into this is the class size reduction and the issues that we're going to have next year where we're having to find space for 10 additional teachers at kindergarten through third grade and, and what we do in terms of our facilities and the modulars that we have in place and, and all of that. I, I don't know who would be on the committee, but I've had a couple of commissioners that have asked if we would look at something like that and include them so that they're at least aware along the way of what we've got going on. Not asking for action to be taken, but just to have the conversations about the things that need to be on our radar and to be very open about it. I mean, so you, are you going to speak to them about who they would want on it? And well, I guess I, mean, we want I could ask the county manager, but if you if you would allow me to move forward sure. with that, we'll start putting that together. I, anybody have any issues with that? I don't. Okay. okay. I don't see any problem with that. Uh, let's discuss a grant for Snowden. This is the Glaxo Smith Klein grant that Snowden has had for a few years. Last year, the, there was some concern that the splash program may run out of money based on the previous year's expenditures, but they actually came in working on a very tight budget and carried $20,000 over. And I reached out to Glaxo, Glax, the, the funder, and asked them if we could carry that $20,000 over to do a, the continuous summer project because we weren't supposed to be able to have one this year at, at, in the summer of 2018. And they have said that they would like for us to use the funds that were not spent and spend those for a summer program. So we're going to look at anything that we could have saved in the current year and try to put together a, another summer program, which we didn't yeah. think we'd be able to do. It may not be the entire length. We're going to kind of get an idea of what we've got to spend, and then we'll work on a budget in terms of the kinds of services we can provide and how long they'll be. But that money is already here. I just wanted you all to be aware of it, that we got permission, asked for permission, we're granted permission to carry it over. So that'll be another service we can provide down in Aurora that we didn't think we'd be able to this summer. Okay. Any questions? Yes, not. We're moving right along. Okay. Entertain a motion to go to closed session. I move that we go <coughs> into closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318.1181 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files <coughs> under General Statute 115C-321. Second. Okay. A motion is second to go into closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to that? Okay. We're in closed session. Okay, we're back in open session, and the first item is to approve the personnel agenda that was just discussed. So move, move. Move. Oh, second. second. Okay, I third. hear a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I hear a motion. Of second and third. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, anybody oppose? Okay. Uh, Snowden land use agreement. Markdown. Yes, sir. Uh, as you may remember, last year the Board of Education and the Town of Aurora signed a one-year joint use agreement for all surrounding land around Snowden. Um, that uh, joint use agreement ends December 31st. So, uh, Dr. Phipps and I contacted the uh, town and started discussion about extending the if they would be interested in extending the joint use agreement. Of course, saying that we would need to come to you and see if you're interested in extending it. And um, representative of the town uh, throughout the. Uh, possibility of doing a 10-year joint use agreement where we would continue to pay to mow the fields and get the upkeep and it would essentially be the same agreement you signed last year but just with a longer contract length. Okay. So um, I, she was going to present that to the town tonight and I said that I would present to you this idea and then we would kind of go from there. But the, uh, so I guess the action item would be are you interested in the joint use agreement and if so are you interested in a 10-year joint use agreement or some other year? Number. So you just want a motion to direct you to go check out a 10-year agreement? Yes, sir. That's what I would like. So <laughs> moved. Mr. Chair. So okay. Okay. okay, I hear a motion a second, and I'm assuming 10-year? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I mean, I, it's not costing us anything, right? Well, it's the, the cost of That's it. We're yeah, which we should exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. See why we wouldn't. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I mean, okay. we utilize it, right? Yes. yes. So, I mean, we need it. <laughs> okay. 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 All in favor, say aye. Aye. Everybody opposed? I guess you can go do that. All right. Now we're going to go to that 6.3 that was added. It might not show on your screen right now, but that was to approve the three capital south side of 7500 project 
HVAC at 58.17 and another HVA at 65.39. And I heard them say that we had the funds to cover cover that. Move approval, Chairman. Second. Okay, I got a motion and a second. Any questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Everybody opposed? Okay, good enough. Calendar and Donna, thank you usually. Yeah, Tell if you take a look at that, a couple, couple questions we have. Number one, the 21st, I just want to highlight that's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, just so you kind of know where that's at on the calendar. This, the 12th of December, we've always tried to do just a single meeting, and we follow that meeting up with the dinner that we have over in transportation. We normally do that meeting early. I went back and looked, and last year we met at 4 o'clock. Uh, that allows us to do the meeting and then have the meal and get out at a reasonable time and just wanted to see if you'd be able to entertain doing something earlier than 5 30. doesn't have to be four but whatever what night is that on that's on a tuesday night. tuesday december 12th carolyn's got her out or her store mm -hmm. how about you Here guys you. that are coming from work in okay. greenville too I, well, I'm, i'll be good uh, well, i'll be there early she'd want to come 30 whatever how about you though terry what are we proposing four o'clock that's what we did last year. I'm just asking if you want to look at that, 4.30 or whatever. We just take a quick meeting and then go over here. And right, you know, I was here. That was, was my first. first. That was right. Yeah. 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 That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with four if that's what everybody okay, wants to do. Fine with me. How about you, Carol? I'll make it work somehow. Okay, say four o'clock then, Don. Okay. okay. If we need it later, that's no, the way. crowds. I'll make it work if I have to close okay. the store. So December twelfth at four o'clock. That'll be the only got December it. meeting that we. That's have. the only one, and we already got set. That's right. For the twenty first. Are we still doing the twenty first yes. at five thirty? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, board Tuesday member Tuesday. updates. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Monday. I'd like to have a minute, please, sir. Sure, go right on. Um, as some of you know, last Thursday we had our was it our fifth. Mr. I think six. Six. Okay. Time flies Excellent. when you're having fun. Mm -hmm. Six Ag Expo. It was probably our biggest uh, one yet. Um, this this event cannot happen without a lot of help. Yeah, okay. I feel that. So I like I, I I feel like I'm at the Academy Awards. I got my list of people <laughs> I'd like to thank at this Go time. Go and if I leave anybody else, I thank you anyway. All right. The problem First is. off, I want to yeah. thank. The superintendent for his guidance and helping getting all of this put together. Um, also, a big help goes to Steve Griffin. It was his brainchild from the get go. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa Duke, for all the times I called and aggravated her, I do appreciate her patience. Uh, William Matt Carolyn, he was the man that handled all the money, mm -hmm. and he's kept us straight with the money. And so, um, Wendy Petaway. She mm -hmm. helped us contact all the other counties that were involved, which we had about 14 involved this mm -hmm. year, uh, in contacting the CTE folks and those counties. Also, um, we had help from the school in Janesville, Nursba. I'd like to thank Sarah Stalls, former employee here. She came in and helped us out a whole lot. Uh, we had a student representative, Noah Ayers. He came up with, what was that thing he came up it with? It was a snap, Snapchat filter that they used. And I understand it It was a hit. I don't mm -hmm. know anything what he was doing, but, you know, he was tickled with it. That's all that matters. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Stan over there, she, she was a big hit that day. And so uh, I, I appreciate all her assistance as well. We had a teacher rep that was also on our committee, Eric Godwin. He, he gave us a lot of input and so forth. i also like to thank... Our associate superintendent, uh, Mr. Dunn. Uh, Carolyn, you've been proud. He actually worked that day. <laughs> he had to go to another county to work, but he actually worked that day. He did a fine job on the site. I try once a year. Uh, once one, a year. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, the central office staff here, they were all champs, and I, we couldn't have done it without all them. Stan Hudson and his staff, wonderful job. They, they were there. They worked till the very end. Um, I'd like to also thank all our sponsors as far as this TV coverage will go. Thank you. And also to both the County Farm Bureau because they were a key from the very get-go and here it is six years later and we're still going. So we're the only region in the whole state doing anything like this. So we got a lot to be proud of and we're going to be having a debriefing meeting. We had a few issues this year, some that popped up that we hadn't had in the, in the past, but it's nothing that we can't work around. And so. Um, um, 
Mr. Chair and board members, we got a lot of good people that work here in Buffalo County with the school system, and they went beyond the call of duty again. And I just like to say publicly, thank you. It's a, it's thank a really you good yeah. 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 Thank you for that. I didn't do a thing. You, I just you left right. off yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. You did a good job carrying that radio around. <laughs> Still didn't know how it worked, but I carried it around. It was, you I was going to say, Butch, he didn't know what it was for, but he carried it around. The <laughs> problem is, the volume was so low, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good show, Mike. Oh, it was. was a great show. That's a nice event. It really is. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Okay, then Superintendent. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You can mention okay. this. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, um, Thursday night this week, there was going to be a circus uh, at Northeast Elementary put on by the kindergartners. Um, it uh, starts at 6.30, and um, it's a fundraiser for their kindergarten and elementary school programs. But uh, admissions four dollars, and I'm going to be the ringleader. So that's I was you might help. come see me in action. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, Miss Sherman asked me if I can come help them out. So um, if y'all get a chance to come down there Thursday night, come on down and see the see the show. I don't think there's gonna be live animals there, but oh come on. Mac had live animals over next. Donkey, yes, donkey. Okay, superintendent. Yeah, following up on what uh, Max said, we had about 1,350 students that went through the Ag Expo, and as he said, 14 school districts. It was a big event. I want to mention that next week is American Education Week, and we will be featuring each school's Teacher of the Year on the school web pages. We encourage the public to visit the Beaufort County Schools webpage to find the links or to go directly to the school web pages uh, to see that. Uh, we'll also be recognizing certified and classified employees during teacher appreciation that occurs in the spring. Friday, as you know, is November the 10th. It's a holiday for students and staff in our school district and across the state. It's <coughs> Veterans Day. And I just want to personally say that uh, we are so thankful to those who have served in the military to allow us to enjoy the freedom and the lifestyle that we have. So while we have a day off and, and it's a vacation time for us, we just want to say thank you to the veterans. And then finally, Ms. Eltha Booth, one of our very own, has been named to the 2017-18 uh, All-State Board. In fact, Mr. Williams had that honor last year. Ms. Booth should be recognized at a ceremony at the North Carolina School Board Association's annual conference next Tuesday, November the 14th in Greensboro, and several of us will be in attendance and see her uh, receive that recognition. So we're proud of you, Ms. Booth. Thank you. Well deserved. You've got the dynasty going. <laughs> dynasty. <laughs> Is that it? That's all. Ms. I'll Pete? make a motion to adjourn. Do I second. hear a second? Got a motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Over. Five fifty seven.